Welcome to Key Tech. Please describe this channel if you are interested in today's video. The United States sells a large number of mid to low end chips to China and then prevents high end chips from being exported, preventing China from obtaining the most advanced chip technology from the United States and achieving breakthroughs in the high tech industry. What the United States did not expect is that China has made significant progress in the field of mid to low end chips. Many chips can be produced and sold in mainland China, so there is no need to import them from the United States. Since the beginning of this year, China's integrated circuit imports have continued to decline. Western lithography machines have been shut down on a large scale, Biden is in trouble, and American chips cannot be sold. U.S. media, it's all China's fault. China has significantly reduced chip imports. China's chip industry has developed rapidly in the past few years, but compared with American chip companies, there is still a certain technological gap. And insufficient market share. Therefore, the Chinese market has always played the role of consumers. In this huge and growing consumer market, it provides American chip companies with an opportunity to expand their business scale and market share. Almost any American chip giant, such as Qualcomm, Intel, Nvidia, and AMD, can make a lot of money in China. More than 30%, or even 60% of revenue comes from China. Even if the United States implements strict chip export control rules, they will launch special edition chips as long as they can do business in China. However, the US chip sanctions have stimulated China's determination to develop its own chips. It has set a goal of 70% chip self sufficiency and wants to produce a large number of chips locally. As a result, China significantly reduced chip imports. In the first half of 2023, China's integrated circuit imports totaled 227.7 billion units, a year on year decrease of 18.5%. Import value was 162.6 billion US dollars, down 22.4% year on year. This downward trend in imports continues, and it is expected that a new record of import decline will be set in the second half of the year and even throughout 2023. The decline in China's integrated circuit market means less demand for China's external procurement of chips, which will affect the business of some US chip companies, especially those that mainly rely on export business to support revenue. Moreover, with the continuous development and growth of China's integrated circuit industry, the market share of Chinese local chip companies is also constantly increasing, which will undoubtedly pose competitive pressure on US chip companies. Large scale shutdown of Western lithography machines. The best example is the return of Kirin chips. By then, Qualcomm will lose a large number of orders for Huawei chips. According to a report released by well known analyst Minkai Kuo, the increase in Huawei's mobile phone shipments has caused the shipments of other mobile phone manufacturers to decline. Qualcomm will also continue to be affected. It is expected that SOC chip shipments will decrease by more than 60 million next year. Minkai Kuo pointed out that Qualcomm will be the biggest loser in the return of Kirin 9000S and will be hardest hit. Things have moved in a direction beyond the control of the United States. From the perspective of the United States, as long as they control high-end chips and do not export them, 
China will continue to purchase mid- and low-end chips from the United States, provide large orders for American companies, and prevent China from doing so. Achieving breakthroughs in the high-tech industry can be described as killing two birds with one stone. But the United States underestimated China's determination and potential to develop self-developed chips. When Kirin chips came back, all the plans of the United States were in vain. Mid- to low-end chips have long been produced in China, and advanced process chips have also made breakthroughs. So does Huawei still need to import Qualcomm chips? Based on this background, Western lithography machines were shut down on a large scale, and they lost chip orders from mainland China. Some chip manufacturers backed by the United States and Western countries are facing declining capacity utilization and being cut off from customers, and have had to shut down lithography machines to save energy. China's Chip Autonomy U.S. Media Blame China According to the American media, it is because the autonomy of Chinese chips has caused American companies to lose a large number of chip orders, and China has given up on chip development, playing the role of a good consumer, and providing the United States with opportunities to make money. It can only be said that the United States thinks too simply. Anyone can develop chip technology. If the United States cannot participate in competition head-on and provide opportunities for fair competition, it is not qualified to dictate. Things are going badly for Biden. The chip competition strategy against China is failing. The United States is revitalizing the localization of chips and providing huge subsidies to attract foreign companies, such as TSMC, to build factories in the United States. The purpose is to help American companies manufacture chips and bring chip orders lost overseas back to the United States. I wonder if the United States has ever thought about who will it sell to when a large number of chips are produced in the future. Japan, South Korea, and the European Union have all formulated plans to manufacture independent chips. However, China, the world's largest chip consumer market, has been restricted by the United States from exporting. Originally, China could consume high-end chips from the United States, but the United States does not sell them. When China's high-end chips achieve a full breakthrough, the chips made in the United States can only be kept for their own use. The autonomy of Chinese chips will continue. The return of Kirin 9000S is just the beginning. We do not rule out the possibility that Huawei will launch more Kirin chips, continue to produce old mid-to-low-end Kirin chips, and then distribute them to mid-to-low-end smartphones. Market Again, as Huawei's mobile phone shipments increase, other mobile phone manufacturers' shipments will decline. Qualcomm faces not only the pressure brought by Huawei as a company, but also changes in the entire Chinese mobile phone market structure. And don't forget that MediaTek is also eyeing it. It is reported that MediaTek's 3 nanometers chip manufactured by TSMC has been successfully taped out and will be mass-produced next year. By then, Qualcomm's competitive pressure will be even greater. Is this the end of the matter? No, Samsung's self-developed Exynos 2400 and Apple's baseband chip expected to be launched in 2025 will double the pressure on Qualcomm. The U.S. chip industry, represented by Qualcomm, is quietly collapsing. If you agree, please like it and welcome to repost, 
leave a message and share it.